Alrighty, Unit 10, Nuclear Chemistry. So, stability. Of an isotope. Remember, isotope is same number of protons, different number neutrons. Depends on the ratio of protons to neutrons. Usually, a one to one ratio is stable. The further you get from a one to one proton to neutron ratio, the more likely an atom will be unstable. All elements greater, so if the atomic number is greater than 83, it'll be unstable. Okay, so then these will decay. Unstable nuclei decay. The different types of decay. And they usually decay by emitting particles and or radiation. And these are all on table O. Alpha particle has an atomic mass of four, an atomic number of two, so that's two protons and two neutrons. A beta particle has a mass of zero, atomic number of negative one, because it's basically an electron. Gamma radiation, mass of zero, charge of zero, it's only radiation. So these three, alpha is the biggest, then beta, and then gamma since it has no mass at all. Move on to a neutron, right, it has a mass of one and a charge of zero, so that's a neutron. You have a proton, mass of one, charge of one. You have a positron, which is a positive electron. And we'll talk about those types of emission in a little bit. Okay, so transmutation is a change in the nucleus of an atom to a new element. Okay, so the atomic number will change with transmutation. Atomic number changes. Yep. Natural transmutation is also called spontaneous decay. And when you have spontaneous decay, the nuclear formula or equation, sorry, will have one thing on the left becoming usually two or more things on the right. And we see examples on table N. All right, these are selected radioisotopes. Shows the nuclide, then gives its half-life we'll get to in a minute, and its decay mode. And this is just a restating of this. 198 AU is gold 198. So let's look at some of these types of natural decay. Okay, first one we'll look at alpha decay. PU-239 undergoes alpha decay. So we have PU-239 PU is going to undergo alpha decay. So we've got to fill in the rest of this, and if we look for... U Okay, so here's our plutonium. And we see the atomic number for plutonium is 94. Oh, we do a little bit of math. 239 minus 4, 235. 
94 minus 2 is 92. We look on a handy dandy reference table and see element 92 is uranium. So plutonium 239 undergoes alpha decay. So it gives off an alpha particle and becomes uranium. Uh, beta decay. We'll look at the top one there. Gold 198. AU 198. We look at our handy dandy reference table. We find gold. See it's element 79. It's going to undergo beta decay. Well, 198 minus 0 is 198. 79 minus negative 1 is 80. We double check, right? We have 79 on the left. 80 minus 1 is 79 on the right. Excellent. And we look here and see that element number 80 is mercury. That would be beta decay. Uh, we'll do one here for positron emission. Calcium-37 undergoes positron emission. So Ca-37. We look here on our handy-dandy reference table. See it's element 20. It's going to undergo positron emission. 37 minus 0 is 37. 20 minus 1 is 19. And we see element 19 is potassium and positron emission. So those were our examples of spontaneous decay or natural transmutation. Now you can also have artificial transmutation. where the natural always had only one thing on the left of the chemical equation. Artificial will always have two things on the left. So usually if it's something really big plus a bullet, right, it'll usually be some type of uh, uranium something or other. So let's say you had uranium-238 plus a bullet, we'll say a neutron, It's going to break down into something smaller, okay, so like usually two smaller things, and then more neutrons, okay. This is fission, okay, when it happens very quickly, it's a nuclear bomb, when it happens very, very slowly, it's in a nuclear reactor. We have two small things, like deuterium, hydrogen 2, and tritium, hydrogen 3, and you jam them together, you'll end up making helium, and then what's left? A neutron. Okay? And on both of these, they give off a lot of energy. Okay? This is fusion taking two very small things, putting them together to make something bigger. All right, so next we talked about half-lives. Half-life is a measurement of time it takes for exactly one half an amount of isotope to decay. And these are on table N as well. So let's say we take something simple like Phosphorus 32, right? The half-life is equal to 14.28 days. So let's say we start with 100 grams of phosphorus 132. One half-life later, 14.28 days, there will be half of that, 50 grams. All 
another half-life later, which is another 14.28 days, or a total of 28.56 days, there will be 25 grams left. Another half-life later, 12 and a half. Another half-life later, 6.25, etc., etc. It's always cutting it in half. Never will it decay to zero. Because you just by dividing it in half and half and half and half, that'll never, ever, ever get you to zero. All right, finally, risks of nuclear power include biological exposure. As you can always say, radiation. All right, if you have nuclear stuff in your bones, then your bones will become radioactive and cause cancer. You also have possibility of nuclear accidents. And how the heck do you store nuclear waste safely? Benefits or uses. Right, you have medical treatment of cancer. Uh, medical tracers, radioactive dating, industrial measurements used to measure the thickness of uh, very thin or even thick things sometimes, but also can find uh, any impurities or problems in like you take a sheet of metal and it's not perfect, it'll find imperfections. And nuclear power. Right, we don't have, there's less conventional pollution when you use nuclear power. All right, that brings us to the end of our last unit review video. And I'll see you guys in school.